Cool. So thanks for joining me, Tom Long, the Director of Golf and the Head PGA Professional at the Kinlock Club in Topor, where uh, we wanted to grab Tom today and have a wee chat about uh, and focus on what makes Kinlock uh, such a special place and a, and a perfect place to measure your game on. So to start us off, Tom, tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and how you ended up at Kinlock. Well... The short version is um, been a PGA pro qualified uh, in the UK probably oh, it's a long time ago now. It's probably about 30 years ago, um, and I dabbled playing full time as uh, we all have dreams of making it on the tour. Um, so you know, I um, I played a lot of the mini tours and um, played a little bit on the Challenge Tour in 2000. Three, 2004 um, but I was always kind of um, I think a little bit too sociable to be dedicated enough to kind of make the most of the talent that I had um, so I kind of um, I would say yeah I, I worked in between playing so I'd have spells where I'd go and earn the cash to go and play again and um, yeah it never really quite worked out so I, I had the PGA qualification to fall back on um, I was actually out in the Caribbean teaching um, people, um, sort of hosting them on a cruise ship, really. When we had land days, I would take them to play golf. And I met my wife, who's a Kiwi. Um, she was on board working and uh, came back to New Zealand. And, and the rest is history, really. That's the kind of short version of how I wound back in New Zealand. Um, I did have two years in New Zealand in the late 90s down at Motueka. I was the first uh, PGA pro that they had down there. So I kind of fell in love with the country and then kind of found my way back there some um, some eight years later, just by, by fate, really. Very cool. Very cool. Now, we sounds like we're very lucky to have you and your skill set in New Zealand and in Taupo specifically. Now, if anyone hasn't been to Kinlock, let's sort of hear it from you. What's the elevated pitch to describe the experience of Kinlock? Um, I think, you know, having been fortunate to have played, played around the world and on, on many different golf courses, um, Kinlock's really unique in terms of the design. Um, you know, it kind of irks me a little bit when people refer to it as an inland links course because although it looks linksy in terms of the rolling fairways, for me, um, links golf is about being able to chase the ball onto a green through a natural channel. And at Kinlock, um, most of the holes are guarded quite heavily at the front, um, so you have no option but to fly the ball to the surface. Um, so for me, you know, it has snippets of Parkland, snippets of Lynx course all kind of rolled into one. Um, but I think the big thing to say about Kenlock is that it is uh, 18-hole Nicholas Design Signature Championship, of course. And I emphasise the word championship because it's tough. I mean, I don't think there is a tougher golf course in New Zealand. Um, it really demands um, every shot to be thought and executed uh, well. Um and I think a lot of people kind of have this misconception that they're going to come to Kenlock first time and, and play to their handicap. And I would say 90% of people don't. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think a championship golf course should be challenging because if you murdered a championship golf course the first time you saw it, you wouldn't actually drive out the gate thinking much of it. So I think one of the, one of the things about Kenlock is that I don't think ever, anybody's ever come off the golf course and said, I haven't left shots out there. So they do come back um, for that reason. And you consistently, or constantly, sorry, you, you, you learn it every time you play it. Um, so, yeah, it's a very unique golf course from that perspective. You've actually um, stolen my next question there, which is quite neat because it's obviously um, front of mind with the way you think of Kinlock. It is a tough course, but it's, it's an opportunity to go and measure your game, isn't it? So... Um, maybe you, you, some people refer to it as a misconception, but it's, it's you know it seems like you're embracing it that it's a hard track and you want to bring people to try it and uh, see if they can tackle it. Is that a fair a fair um, way to present the Kinlock? I, I would say 100. percent I mean, I, I always say to people, look, if you're coming down to, to Taupo and you're you're spending a few days down here, I, I really think that you, you play Kinlock twice because the first time is is literally just a, a learning experience. I think you know. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss to a point, but I think Kinlock is knowledge is key over ignorance is bliss, you know, and I think, you know, if the only way somebody would play it half sensibly the first time they saw it in terms of, you know, their course management would be to walk to the 18th green, walk every hole back to front and then tee off. And no one's ever going to do that. 
Um, so the first time people go out there, you know, you don't necessarily score better second time round, but you definitely play with more confidence um, in the sense that you know kind of lay out a little bit better um, and you kind of, you know, you hope that that knowledge will, will knock a couple of shots off your score. Is there a better practice facility in the country? Because it's one of the best places to warm up. You know, you sit there and you look out towards all those sort of options to, to aim against them. I mean, it's one of the neat things about the course. Have you seen a better practice facility up and down the country? Well, I think it's on a, uh, you know, I, I think obviously it's RNT and TRI. I think obviously they've got, you know, fantastic facilities up there. But I think Kinlock is up there with the best of them. Uh, I'm not going to go on record just saying it's the best, but it's certainly one that people, um, you know, they, they consistently are late for their, their tea time um, because they do kind of um, really enjoy, you know, looking down that range and hitting balls to targets and, and just uh, making the most of the, the awesome facilities that that we have down there. So sometimes that's problematic because they, you know, you have to drag them off, literally drag them off the practice area and say, "Hey guys, you're going to get on the tee." Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say the practice facilities are pretty good at Kinlock, to be honest. Now I was going to ask you one of the secret, what are the secrets to unlock Kinlock? And it seems the biggest secret is to make sure you get a repeat visit because it is one of those ones you want to have a second crack at once you understand a little bit back to front, but. Maybe for those people who only got one shot at it or they're just looking forward to a particular round down there, what are some of the memorable shots on the golf course that they can look forward to? Uh, that's a question that I get asked quite a bit, actually, in terms of, you know, what are, what are, what are the nicest golf holes on the golf course? And it's, it's one of those, I mean, obviously I have my favourites. However, I would say that, you know, Kinloch for me is a golf course where there isn't one weak hole. You know, you do play a few golf courses and you kind of you kind of think we struggle to picture after playing them, you know, two, three, maybe even four or five holes that you can't bring up in your mind. Whereas I think at Kinloch, every single hole is, is demanding. Um, there's no pars or birdies that are fluked. You know, every 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 bar and birdie at Kinloch is definitely earned. Um, and I think that, you know, on the, on the whole way around, of course, there are, yeah, there, there are some pretty spectacular tee shots that you you face. I mean, I, I think the third hole, par three, over the water, um, where you can actually see, you know, Lake Tapa in the background, um, that's a pretty cool hole. Um, it's quite hard to get a three on. In fact, if you're off the three, you'd you, you bite someone's hand off and walk to the next hole. Um, and then I think the nice thing about the front nine is that you're not really aware of the situation of the golf course in terms of the location. Um, you're kind of more embroiled in, in the golf course itself and then you hit the 10th tee um, and you come over the top after the ninth green and, and you're wowed by, hey, look, Lake Taupo, the northern shores of Lake Taupo are just there. So, you know, it's I, I think Kenlock is more about the golf course than the views, although on the back nine we do get some amazing views. Um, but I think the 10th tee shot is, is one where people kind of rub their sleeves up and, and give it a bit of a rip because it's an elevated tee. Um, and you're hitting down to an, an awesome fairway and you know that you're going to get a little bit more extra yardage on, on, on that one if you can get it in the air. So, um, yeah, I would say probably for me the third, tenth tee and also the 15th hole are pretty spectacular. How about um, the course the sort of evolution? You know, you've know, you highlighted some pretty um, spectacular holes there. Have there been many tweaks or changes to the course uh, since its inception in 2007? No, very few, very, very few, because any um, any change has to be overseen by the Nicholas uh, guys. Um, they have to come over and, and, and literally, you know, say what needs to be done, and then they have to check it and sign it off because they have to they have to do that for it to retain the, the signature design. Um, I think we probably, one, possibly changed. Uh, the, the 14th green had a little bit of... Uh, a softening in terms of some of the undulations on it as well as the 16th green and the second green um, but other than that um, the golf course is I mean the amazing thing about Kenlock really is that every lump and bump and every sheep rub was man-made everyone kind of thinks that they fit the golf course onto the land that was already there but not the case um, when I turned up in 2007 um, the golf course was still dirt um, so it was still being kind of sculpted and um, the amazing thing really for me seeing a golf course at that stage was the fact that the guys had to 
in their mind almost photoshopped the grasses on top of the, the dirt that was in front of them to, to kind of visualise what this thing was actually going to look like. Um, but for me, it was quite nice because they used me at the time to kind of, you know, hit tee shots off the dirt to, to work out landing areas and, um, you know, especially on the par five so that, you know, you could, if you hit a good one, you could you could have a crack in two or, you know, so that, that was quite nice for me to see a golf course at that stage and, and have that involvement, which is probably why I'm slightly fond of the place, to be honest with you. Well, you, you've you've been there as long as it's um, almost it's been open, I believe. So it, yeah, um, day one, yeah. day one. So it's obviously pretty special. Um, you know, I, I think with Kinlock, the, the the thing about playing Kinlock is that you know a lot of people are unfortunately, you know, I always say to people just as a joke, you know, bring your A game because um, you're going to need it, um, and they always giggle. But um, you know, a lot of people they have what I call a, a one-dimensional short game in the sense that if they miss a green they automatically pull out the 56-degree wedge and they kind of flight the ball, you know, towards the hole. But at Kinlock, you, you, you can't have a one-dimensional short game and score. You, you have to have an array of shots. Um, so, and, and then the other thing I would say about, you know, the approaches into the green or the second shots into the green, you know, the only flat lie you really get at Kinlock is on the tee. Um, so even if you hit it down the middle, you're going to be coping with a, you know, a sloping lie, whether it's a downhill or a side hill or an uphill. And, so, you know, when you have to fly the ball off those lies all the way to the, to the dance floor, um, you know, sometimes that, that, that makes people kind of slice it, pull it, mm. you know, come up short, just misjudge the clubs. So I think pin-seeking at Kinlock is, you know, it's tempting, but sometimes it's not, not, not the best way to, uh, to protect a, a decent scorecard. You must have hosted a fair few amazing people, personalities, and groups over, over the uh, the years. So, are you able to maybe touch on a few notable or famous people or who have come to play there? Yeah, um, who have we had? I mean, look, I, I had the pleasure of playing golf with the, with the then Prime Minister um, John Key um, a few years back. That was pretty awesome. Um, you know, just to even even to text my my mates back home and said oh, I played with with the prime minister today. You know, that was that was kind of a bit strange. But you know, apart from Jack meeting Jack himself and having Jack come to open um, the golf course twice, obviously he opened the front nine first, um, and back nine was obviously slightly longer to get ready. So he did come back in February two thousand and eight to, to to reopen, and we actually you know we had. We had 18 holes out of him um, that time as well because he was having such a good time having played the the nine that he hadn't uh, he hadn't previously played or, or weren't open. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, we get we, we've um, recently we had the England cricket team come through. They came for a game because you know they they know it's one of the best. Um, you know, we we get the Black Caps, we get the rugby players coming through, and you know. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of A-list Hollywood celebrities, um, none, none spring to mind. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's probably because you know the, the lodge itself is is pretty private. So, um, and those people don't want you know people knowing that they're there. Um, but yeah, we've, we've we've had quite a few people come through over the years. I mean, yeah, December two thousand and seven. So what are we now? We're twenty three. So sixteen years on, we've 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 had a lot of uh, a lot of people come through and enjoy it. Um, and the one thing I would say is that they all say that it is world class. You know, one thing is that it's definitely a world class golf course. It stands up with, with you know, the best around the world. Um, and as you know, we've got some equally good golf courses around the country. I mean, New Zealand, you know, has, has you know, probably up to a dozen world class golf courses, um, which is pretty amazing for, for a country um, the size of New Zealand. Yeah, I think we're very lucky to have Kinlock as one of the, the top few on that offering. I think your comments have kind of firmly kind of um, you know, put the, that course like right where it belongs because that's the way people view it. But just before we let you go in your, your day, Tom, um, so t- Kinlock, Kinlock, as I say, and Topol has held a special place for golfers over the years. The um, high quality of um, offering is all within a, a short drive from the town itself, centrally located in the North Island. All that's a real draw card. And we've had obviously had a pretty terrible summer up and down the North Island. So, what would you say to anyone considering a trip to Topor to, um, to get their golf fix um, this year? Oh, I would say 100% do it. You know, I mean, um, we've got Wairaki down the road, which is beautiful, as you know, beautiful international golf course and sanctuary. Um, and 
I think the great thing about the Wairaki being on our doorstep as well is that we've got two golf courses that are you know, equally as good in quality, but they're very, very different in terms of design and um, experience. Um, so, you know, to have two golf courses here um, that are so good, um, it's just a great place for people to come, even if it's for a two, three day trip, you know, they're going to get their, their golfing fix in um, without having to tra- travel too far. and. and and the town itself is, is such an awesome place to stay and, and, and for me to live. Um, but, you know, it's only, what, three hours south of, of, of Auckland. And um, being in the heart of New Zealand, we do get people coming in kind of like we're in the middle of the compass on the North Island, really. So um, it's easy to get to. It's a great place for people to kind of meet friends who, who aren't living in the same city or town that they are. So, yeah, I would, I would say get down and do it.